Here is the chapter uh, 19 exercises or homework. And um, I think what I asked you to do was to do 1 through 8 on the homework. Does that sound right? Just 1 through 8. We can look at some more of these if you want to. But um, does anybody have any specific questions about 1 through 8 here? What I'd like to do is really spend most of our time going through these for the remainder of the class period here. And uh, maybe even taking some of these verbs and practicing uh, creating some forms with them. So, any questions here? Okay, so number two, uh, we're to, to write, uh, write down, I lie, shall lie down in, in Hebrew. So, uh, first thing we have to know is what is the verb for lying down? So, what is that in Hebrew? Shakab. It's shakav. Good. So, shin, kaf, faith, right? Shakav. Uh, with I shall lie down, the most normal form for me to use for that will be which one? The callum perfect. Okay? And if it's imperfect, am I using prefixes or just suffixes? Prefixes. That's right. The imperfect uses the prefixes. For I, which person gender number is that? Yes. One CS. So I'm going to use which, uh, which nutty prefix? Olive. Olive. Good. Now, normally, what vowel goes under the prefix on the imperfect? Kirik. Olive prefers? Sigol. So we're going to give it a sigol. What kind of shavad goes under one, root one? Silent. Silent. So esh. And then normally, I would have a holum for the imperfect, right? But if you look at your vocab word for shakav, it is not holum. It is what? It is pathak. That's right. So this is esh kav. And then, since this is a silent shiva, this begad kafat letter kaf should get what inside of it? Dagesh Dagesh because begad kafat letters come with those unless a vowel sound preceding blows it out. There's no vowel sound here. So, esh kaf. Esh kaf. All right, so say that with me. Esh kaf. So, I shall lie down, or I will lie down. Let's. Just tinker with this a little bit. What if I want to say, we shall lie down? We. What would I have to do to, to this to change it up? Keep the root letters. The prefix is not aleph, but noon. That's right. So would it be neshkov? No. What happens to the sigol? It becomes kirik. So, got to get rid of that. And it's Nishkov. So, we will lie down. Nishkov. All right, good. What about you, man, will lie down? You, man, will lie down. What's that? What prefix am I going to use for that? Yeah, I got to use the prefix Tav, right? Okay, so let's change the noon to Tav. And. Do I change any of the vowel points here? Nope. That's it. Tishkov. Tishkov. So you man will lie down. Tishkov. And then finally, what if I want to say you woman will lie down? Do I use a different prefix for 2FS? No. You woman is still tish. What happens on the back side for you woman? Feminine singular. Kirik yod at the end. The imperfect to fs is prefix tav and kirik yod on the back end. Um, am I going to be able to keep that full pathak vowel here when the beth takes the kirik yod? Nope. It's going to slide over and leave the ka open, and the tone's going to be on the end now, right? So this is pretonic now. Open and pretonic. Verbs, verbs, verbs do what with open pretonic syllables? Reduce them to vocal shiva. Nouns and adjectives do what when their syllables are open and pretonic? Think old preacher sermons are long. Open pretonic syllables require long, right? Good. So it becomes tishkavi. Tishkavi. You woman will lie down. Tishkavi. Okay? All right. Now, what if I wanted to say you woman did lie down, 
you woman did lie down, and I want to use the WCI or Vyictal formation to do it. What would I have to change about this? To do Cal WCI 2FS. Okay. Do I have to take the prefix off? No. Nope. WCIs are prefixed. But I also have Vav in front and Pathak and now I have a Dagesh Forte. You can tell the difference, right? You see that Dagesh Forte there? <laughs> okay, so there it is. So, so that's now past tense. You woman did lie down. Okay, va tishkavi. Va tishkavi. Okay, good. All right, so I just wanted to bring in both this chapter and last chapter. All right, any, uh, any other questions? Number eight, we have why will you break the vessel? Well, sounds like a very typical thing to ask, huh? <laughs> Why will you break the vessel? Um, one of our new vocab words from the chapter is the question word why. Who remembers what that is? Lama. Yeah, it's the word lama. lama. Okay, <laughs> lama. Now, are there any animals that you can think of? <laughs> and there's an accent mark on the first syllable, so lama. I remember the meaning of the word llama as why, because there was once upon a time when I remember hearing when Michael Jackson was alive that he had pet llamas. And I just used to go, why? <laughs> right. Who does that? That's so weird. Okay, so llamas, why? Anyhow, so my question word is why, so I'm going to use llama. This is, this is really, the word ma means what? What? <laughs> That's right. It's the word what? The Lamed is probably just an alternate spelling for the Lamed preposition. And so it's what for or for what? Well, if you say, what'd you do that for? What are you asking? Why? why? Right? So Lama is for what? Why? Okay, so why? And then we have, will you break the vessel? So let's just focus on the verb, will you break? Okay, will you break? We can rephrase that to you will break to realize what we're dealing with is what person, gender, and number here. So they tell you it's masculine singular. So to a mess, and with will break, it's going to be imperfect, right? So what's my prefix going to be for you to a mess? It's going to be a tav, right? And it'll have that kirik under it. What's, what are the root letters for break? Shin Beit Resh. So it's going to be Tish, Silent Shiva, and then Bor. Okay. Do I need a, a dot in the Beit? Yes. Yeah, since there's no vowel sound, that's a Silent Shiva. I need a, I need a Dagesh Lene if it's a big Atkafet letter there, root two. So Lama Tish Bor. Why will you break? Why will you break? And then the last thing I have to do is is indicate this, this uh, noun phrase, the vessel. Now, is that going to be definite or indefinite? Definite. definite. Is it going to be the direct object of break? Yes. Yeah, so what am I going to see in front of the word for the vessel? The direct object marker. So it's going to be et, either eight with the sere or et with the segol and a makaif. You can do it either way. And then what is the vessel? So kali is vessel, but it's the vessel, so I want to add ha kali with a doubling dot, right? Ha doubling dot. So ha kali. So lama tishbor et ha kali. Why will you break the direct object, the vessel? Okay, so say that with me. Lama, lama tishbor et ha kali. Why will you break the vessel? Yes, sir. For the tish board, does the tub lose the because of the lama? Ah, good question. Yes. In this sort of a situation, there's probably not going to be any pause between these. So there would be a vowel before that. So you could see that Dagashlene go out. Yep. Good. Very good. So let's change this up. Let's not say, why will you break the vessel, but why will you keep the vessel. What is the, what's the verb for keep? Shamar. 
So what do we got to do? Well, everything stays the same except for the letters, right? In fact, just one letter changes. Instead of shavar, it's shamar. So let's just switch that up and look at what we've got. Lama tishmor et hakali. You see how it sounds exactly the same, just different root letters, right? Because once you learn the vowel patterns, it, it flows, okay? And, and by the way, kids do this in English while they're learning English. They learn the vowel patterns and the suffixes for, for different things. So, um, you know, uh, I... Uh, I uh, I, I, um, what is it? Uh, I, I, well, I'm thinking of all the irregular verbs. I want to think of regular verbs. What do I, what do I want? Um, I look, I looked, right? At a T. And then, um, you know, then kids take that normal pattern and then they try to apply it to things that are irregular. So, I speak, I speak, <laughs> right? And it's, no, it's, it's, I, I spoke. Well, uh, but, but usually once they, they learn the patterns, they just start to flow, and they don't have to come across familiar verbs. They just know how to form the different forms of them because they've learned the patterns. Okay. So anyhow, uh, lama tishmor, lama tishmor, why will you keep? Uh, okay, and then um, what, about, what about why will you cut? Why will you cut? What, what's the verb for cut? Ah, karat. So, what's it going to be? Lama. Oops. Can you can you think of it without seeing it written? If it's tishmor, just switch karat in there. It's lama tich rot. Lama tich rot. Why will you cut? Lama tich rot. Okay. Uh, one more, and then we'll we'll go. Uh, how about? No, what verb do we want? How about, ah, let's use kaved. Why will you be heavy? Why will you be heavy? It's not going to be holem here, is it? Because kaved is a state of verb. So I've got to use the state of vowel for the imperfect. What is it in the imperfect? Okay, yes, remember, state of verbs use a pathak for their imperfect theme vowel. So it's going to be tich, not bod, but tich, bad. Lama tich bad. Why will you be heavy? Lama tich bad. If I want to ask a woman that, I would prepare to get slapped, but um, <laughs> what would happen? I'm going to leave the tich bad, but add a... Kirik yod, right? And then what will happen to the pathak here? Dalit slides over, takes a new vowel, starts a new syllable, takes the tone, that's open and pretonic, and it goes to vocal shiva. Lama tik badi. Lama tik badi. All right, good. Well, we'll stop.